Well, I am uh, Onyechi Ikweazo. Um, I'm a legal practitioner called to the bar to practice as a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. I um, have two offices, one in Onyechi, my hometown, and one in Abuja. I'm married with very lovely children, and um, I happen to be the, I'm an ordained pastor and now the general overseer of uh, our Savior's Church, which was established in 69, and then with the church building erected in 1974. I am a Freemason, and uh, I've been in Freemason for a while. Um, I reigned in my lodge. I also went into the higher degrees. Uh, a while ago, I was made an assistant district grandmaster by Olorogu Moses Tiger to supervise the Eastern District, Eastern Division of the District Grand Lodge of Nigeria English Constitution. I'm also a member of some other lodges, notably Salu Mbani for Lodge where I was privileged to be the chapter master. Well, right now, by the grace of the Most High and the intervention of the Most High, I was preferred in 2019 to succeed Olorogo Moses Tiger as the district grandmaster for Nigeria and also the grand superintendent in and over Nigeria. I am married, of course, with very lovely children. Well, right now we have our 42 lodges and 14 chapters in Nigeria. Um, they are not necessarily adequate and um, we find that most of the chapters are centered in the western part of the country and um, the situation exists where the brethren and companions have to travel, especially those in the east and in the north, to access the lodges or the chapter, the chapter especially. So um, right now that is what we have, but it is grossly inadequate for a country as vast as Nigeria. Absolutely not. Free masonry is not really a society per se, it's an association of men, but non women, because you have female order. Association of men who are united by certain lofty moral principles. It is not a secret society. As a matter of fact, a secret society is defined, and then um, that we have cases, case law, for instance, the Amok case and all that, defining what secret society is. The Freemasonry is not a secret society, it's a, an association of men willing to admit all those that are of good report, that are also free, and that are willing to participate in the advantages of Freemasonry. So it is not a secret society. We have Masonic halls that are known, fixed addresses. We hold our meetings, sometimes our functions are done in public. I remember during the 280th anniversary of Freemasonry, English Freemasonry, under the United Grand Lodge of England, the um, lodge actually held at the Wembley, <laughs> it was an open stadium, with people attending and free to um, also observe, but it was also carried in the media. So um, certainly it is not a secret society. And, uh, Unfortunately, we have succumbed to all kinds of conspiracy theories which are 
based on mundane reasoning. Um, the last time Donald Trump uh, somehow incited people to attack the Capitol, we overheard so many people saying, oh, let us proceed and take our country back from Freemasons. <laughs> and it was quite a, it was quite interesting that uh, at their level, they actually were of the view that American societies are being run by Freemasons, and this is really indeed a, a disjointed uh, reasoning. The truth, however, is that most of the founding fathers of, the, of America were British anyway. They belonged to the Grand Lodge of England, mm -hmm. and when they migrated or called America their homes, for instance, they were yet Masons. And they proceeded under that banner until the War of Independence in, I believe, 1776. Then they now formed their own respective lodges. George Washington, for instance, the first, first president of the United States, was a Mason. He belonged to the uh, Lodge of Virginia. And indeed, if you look at the picture for his uh, inauguration, he had his full Masonic regalia. <laughs> And the Bible that he swore on was the Bible used in his lodge. And the reason he gave was that he wanted to emphasize that he believed so much in God. That is why the American slogan, in God we trust. And that he wanted to assure everyone that with the commitment he made towards his Masonic obligation, that he will also carry that in ruling the country. So Well, that is another thing. Uh, Freemasonry certainly is not a religion. <laughs> um, we have deeply religious people as Masons. But here is the catch. Spirituality unites, but religion divides. That is why in Freemasonry we are told to avoid every topic of political or religious discussion because there are things people who are very embedded and indelible views and opinions on that whenever um, they are called upon to express an opinion, then you know, you see that you find diverse opinions and very strong opinions indeed. So Freemasonry is not a religion, but Freemasonry enables a religious person to appreciate in a practical sense, the essence of his religion. In other words, if you are a Christian, let me use an example because we don't draw distinction between beliefs and denominations. For a Christian, Freemasonry makes you a better Christian. It teaches you to do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. That is the golden rule. We believe so much in that and we try to practice that as much as we can. And then our symbols, our symbols found in the Holy Book. For instance, the roles of people like Hiram Abib, Hiram, Hiram King of Tyre, and even King Solomon himself that participated in the erection of the temple. And even the second temple with Zerubbabel, Nehemiah, Ezra, participating in the second. These are symbols that we have imbibed and we, by allegories, we relate them to our everyday relationship, respect for government, regard for each other, and then also regard for the self. So it's not a religion, but it assists the religious person to practice his religion in the manner his holy book, which we call the volume of the sacred law, in my case, it is the Bible, to appreciate the tenets there and then abide by them instead of being hypocritical. Well, basically, um, we believe in brotherly love. 
we believe in truth. We believe in relief. So it's brotherly love, relief, and truth. Brotherly love, for instance, as I said that it is not a religion, but it assists someone to practice his religion better. As a Christian, when I, am, I hear about brotherly love or read about brotherly love in Messianic books, then my mind automatically goes to how the Good Samaritan, for instance, how Christ illustrated who we are neighbor in the nature of our ways. So I proceed in expressing that love in this universal man kind's existence. So the next person is my brother. Whether or not he's a mason, he's a mason, he's my brother. Relief. If there's a friend or brother, the brotherhood in a generic sense that is it's genuinely in need, certainly it is my responsibility. Within the length of my capacity to see how I can bring about relief to such a person. And then truth. A mason should be very truthful. A mason should be very upright in all his dealings. Not just with a fellow basin, but in all endeavors. I'll give an example. Because people tend to say that, oh, Freemasons, which is the criticism in the West, that Freemasons tend to come together and practice nepotism and aid each other to the detriment of the society. Well, that is not correct. Um, we had a great mason who was a chancellor of the church in the person of Sir Louis Banefo. He was the first Igbo lawyer, in fact, the first lawyer in the old Eastern region. He was also the first judge and then also the first Supreme Court justice. Now, there's, there was an incident where he presided over a person who was accused of stealing. So apparently, after the trial, it got to the point of writing judgment, and it got to the point, eventually, to the point of sentencing. The accused person or defendant was making certain signs to indicate that he was a mason. So at the end of it, Salman Banefu gave him the maximum sentence. And he said that he deliberately, that he understood the correctness of the signs which he gave him, but that as a Freemason, he ought not to have put himself in that position. So he was disposed to giving him, and then now, the steepest punishment in that regard. So we are not practicing nepotism. We believe in, like I said, brotherly love, we live and in truth. A mission, his word should be his bond. He should not be susceptible to disease and all that. And that is why, if you are talking to a brother mason and he tells you a story or says something, you put him on the spot. You say, Are you really speaking as a mason? We have a symbol for that. And he'll say, Yes. At that point, he cannot debate because he took both with his hand on his volume of the sacred law, in my case, in the Holy Bible. So wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I am attentive to the obligations which I take at all times. So we believe in charity, and that is the both love and relief part of the tenets on which the Freemasonry is founded. Charity in this first Corinthians 12 is actually the same as love. If I go back to my volume of the sacred law, I'll look it up when St. Paul was talking to the Corinthians that love does not suffer. Love does not envy and all that. Mm -hmm. So it means that when you combine just outright expression of love with charity, which is an aspect of love itself, then masonry, if it can be described in a generic term, is more like a charitable organization. Uh, in England, for instance, the largest charity in England is Masonic Charity. In Nigeria, we have certain Masonic charities going on. 
from Adema Lapidia, and they announce a loan by the folk charity and others. And we assist not just our members, but we assist people from all stations in life. Take, for instance, during COVID, masons all over Nigeria made it a point to go out, even to the frontliners, and assist them. We bought certain things that assisted in very many respects. The brethren in Seregon and in the Gambia, for instance, gave us a sum of 10,000 naira to assist us in our charity work. $10,000, yes, one naira. And then the um, United Grand Lord of England sent to us 5,000 pounds to assist us in our endeavors. The brethren themselves raised over 11 million naira in the first instance, and then eventually we raised more money. We utilize all that to express that love to grant relief and support to those who needed it. So that is what Freemasonry is all about. You can describe Freemasonry in one, one short sentence of expression. Membership is uh, always a challenge, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. Even in London now, they have membership uh, challenge. Um, the reason, I think, is primarily on the negative and false impression of masonry. So there are persons that are already behaving like masons that are not members of the lodge. I keep telling them that some of the best masons don't belong to any lodge. Now, the point now is how do you not attract members as if you are getting paid or whatever by having a paid membership, but attract people to enable them to be exposed to the benefit, lofty benefits of the masonry. So I believe that. Um, as a body, we should be able to open up. Marriage, for instance, you get your certificate before you get involved. So you now find, <laughs> find out after you would have been issued a certificate to marry. Now, but life isn't that way. Usually, people want to experience something, or at least know what it is before they get involved. So I have always been advocating that we should be able to, for instance, because we have degrees in this, we should be able to, for instance, just in a generic sense, tell somebody, this is what we're doing. This is what it's all about, without still spoiling their fun of finding out those allegories that are hidden, those expressions, those symbols, and religious symbols. Take, for instance, looking at the uh, Temple of Jer uh, Solomon, the first temple, you find that there are pillars, and those pillars were named by Solomon. It's there in the Bible. You know, name one Boaz, you name the other one Jackin. So you now say, well, I am at least able, I should be able to at least explain that you need stability. You need to establish yourself. And the first aspect of Freemasonry will expose you to such things like st stability, um, you need to establish yourself, take whatever you're doing very seriously, to be somebody. You should be able to explain, for instance, that we are admonished to be loyal to the sovereign of our native land, remembering that by nature, for instance, we are planted here as against South Africa or New York, we're here, and it is, we are planted here for a purpose. So we need to explain certain things so that they will have a better eyes view of what it's all about. So I think that accounts for the challenge we are experiencing. I'll, I'll tell you a story. There was a time bishops, Anglican bishops went on a conference in London. Incidentally, it was presided over by the um, Ronsi, 
who was the then Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, one bishop from Onich, uh, not Onich, from Nigeria, <laughs> one from the East, actually, presented a paper. And the paper he presented, he stated that, that the problem in the Nigerian church was caused by Freemasons. So after the paper, Bronxy, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, he got up and said, well, the paper was quite intriguing, but it was attentively listening to find out how Freemasonry can possibly be a problem for the church. Then he declared in the presence of all of them that he was a Mason. The bishops next to him at the podium got up one after the other to declare that they were missing. Now, something positive came from it because when they came back to Nigeria, there was a time when 100 and, I think 112 or 121 persons were made knights of the church, and many of them were practicing masons. So this is what ignorance can do to our order membership. If we're able to explain and not be so spooky about things, then I believe that we can attract substantial people as members. You know, sometimes you open up an interview, somebody will apply to be made a mason, and you ask him, why do you want to be a mason? In my experience, I had once, some person, when I asked him, why would you want to be a mason? He said, oh, well, that he had gotten power from here, he'd gotten power from there, that he now needed masonic power. And I said, gentlemen, we are powerless, we have nothing to offer in terms of power. So, if I asked him whether he was a Christian, he said that he used to, I said, good. Why don't you become a better Christian and then at that stage apply to be to join our order? So it's not like we are going around shopping for members and all that. We gain nothing. What we are doing when we encourage people to join us is to encourage them to participate in a system that will enable them to develop themselves and be better person because we say in Mason we make good men better men. So that is why we want people to come and share the same experience with us. Well, we say that Freemasonry is universal. What it means is that we have a universal existence, we have a universal brotherhood. And we feel that the English Freemasonry offers a perfect playground or stage to display that very expression that it is Freemasonry universal. So, um, in this sub region, the West African sub region, Okay, some years ago, the three district grandmasters got together and felt that it would be appropriate to exchange visits. Now, every year, every lodge, every district or province must have what we call annual communication. So we decided, they decided that we should attend each other's uh, annual communication. And um, we found out that that was perfect. In fact, the true grandmaster once told the gathering that if you, if they wanted to enjoy Freemasonry, that they should go to West Africa. So we have this corporation, which as the district grandmaster of Nigeria, I am still encouraging, um, so that we have the idea to visit, we have the opportunity to visit each other discuss each other's issues that are peculiar to certain districts and assist each other. The one instance when we went to Gambia, which is under the district grand lodge of England for the district of, of um, Sierra Leone and Gambia, we went there, we went to the church 
Incidentally, the Monsano who presided over the service was actually a Mason too. A Monsano, a Catholic too. Now we went there, um, they, they expressed some difficulty in obtaining a particular type of church bell, which at the time came at a price of seven, uh, over seven point five thousand dollars US dollars, with shipping and all that came to between nine and about eight and nine thousand dollars. So they opened up a, 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 a bid or a, a, a plea for support. So we felt that let there be something indelible that the Nigerian district had contributed. So we got up and gave them $10,000 so that they will have enough to do the installation and all that. So that is what really that corporation can do. Bringing us together, assisting each other, being happy, communicating happiness. And that is the essence of free messages. So it's beautiful uh, for us to, in this subregion, to be together as we, we have been doing. And I intend to perpetuate it as long as I'm the Ministry Grand Master and the Grand Superintendent in Amazon and Georgia. Yes, as a matter of fact, we have proposed some to the United Landlords of England. And um, the process is not tedious, but the process is meticulous. Um, we had anticipated that by now we would have consecrated to, but they raised certain issues with respect to the documentation. Uh, we have corrected both of them, and we're going to resend as, as soon as we can. Um, we need to have more chapters, especially in the eastern and the northern part of the country. People travel from Makodi to attend chapters. That should be the case. Uh, people travel from even from Oweri to attend St. John's chapter in Odisha. That should be the case. Um, we need to establish more lodges and chapters. If you have a lodge that is on the cumbersome side because of the number, then it takes, it takes it makes it a bit more difficult for the master machines to ascend. And um, it was a bit marking time. And um, uh, without new ideas and things, somebody could well be interested. So if there's something to look forward to, um, and then you'll get there within a reasonable time then that will also um, sustain interest. So we need to do that, and we hope to uh, do, do at least two of them this year. Well, first of all, I'm just full of gratitude. Um, seeing the array of the brethren that turned up last night, if they came from the north, from the west, um, from Calabar area, from all over the country, to attend uh, half yearly. Uh, my expectation is that we have if possible, the same number of brethren participating in the craft as well as in the rural part. That is why we have taken a uh, special care, first of all, for me to plead with the uh, United Grand Lords of England to be allowed to appoint deputies, one for Royal Arch, one for the craft, so that we have a, an experienced deputy that concentrates on the Royal Arch and then we'll see how we can enable it. But we cannot do it if the brethren of the craft do not willingly submit themselves. Now there is a compulsion 
because you can't get to any of the tiers without uh, being exalted in your heart. But I, I want it to be beyond compulsion. Let it be interest. So I pray that the brethren will be truthful to our obligation to practice brotherly love, to practice belief, to practice truth and truthfulness. Not just in the Lord. We start in the Lord. Charity, they say, begins at home. Let us exist in harmony. You know, when people from diverse backgrounds come together, we are bound to have issues, but let them remain as issues. Let them not go beyond simply addressing the issues and going on in amity as brothers. So that is what I plead and I pray, given any opportunity. We must maintain harmony, genuine harmony, not just to have peace without justice. We should be able to blend both of them and then come out stronger. Then we should, what we are exposed to inside, we should ensure to also practice outside the Lord. So that somebody will look at you, look at your conduct, look at your reaction at things. And will find something special and esoteric, esoteric about you. Find something that endears him or her. Not just to you, but to actually start believing that these are not bad people. Something must have gone wrong. And that thing that went wrong can be traced to historical events. When the certain governments decided to victimize certain orders, even an order like the Crusaders that became the Knight Templars and things like that. So we should be able to carry out what we need, what we are, and be able to express that to the uninitiated so that they, their prejudices and those conspiracy theories will be obliterated. I plead with the brethren, let us continue, continue to practice love, to practice charity, and realize that our neighbors are not just our fellow Masons. We have this universal 